What is it about hunting rabbits and squirrels that makes three grown men want to run around in the woods all day with a pack of dogs like a bunch of 12-year-old kids? Oh, I got him, I got him. The answer to that, of course, lies within the question. Ugh. You get to run around in the woods all day with a pack of dogs. Oh, right there, right there, right there! In this case, the woods are in my home state of Michigan, and the dogs belong to Kevin Murphy, the world's greatest small game hunter. Take no prisoners. <laughs> Now, as Kevin says, let's get off the egg. Well, no, let's get some more. <laughs> I've followed trails of all kinds, pursuing wild game through our country's wildest places. These are my stories. There he's got. These are my people. <laughs> I'm Steven Ranella, and this is Meat Eater. Oh, that's a good looking dog, man. Cow, tiger stripes. Yeah, Br Brindle, Brindle. He is a dog that can tree squirrels. He's not a squirrel dog. He might go in the woods here and like start yipping and barking right in here. And a squirrel might be over here in this tree. What good is he then? I mean, he gets you within 20 foot of a squirrel. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> and he's just getting to get better. He's just a year old. I like to say that my buddy Kevin Murphy is the world's greatest small game hunter, meaning he's got not just more know-how, but more passion than anybody I have ever met. With his fleet of squirrel dogs and rabbit beagles, he's been chasing small game around the country out of his home base in Kentucky for half a century. Since meeting Kevin, I've taken to asking myself this question pretty much everywhere I go. I wonder if we'd do any good if Kevin brought his dogs here. Considering Kevin's proclivity to travel in search of new adventures, that question never needs to linger. I just call him up and we make plans to get an answer. For this Southern Michigan go around, we're hunting my friend Matt Cook's place, who did pretty much the most noble thing a person can do, which is literally tear out a golf course in order to turn it back into wildlife habitat. His land manager and much of the muscle behind that project is Guy Zuck, who I lovingly refer to as Mother Zucker. This guy knows the best spots to find whatever game you're looking for. Do you know Guy Zuck here is embarrassed to, that we're making him carry the shotgun? Because he says the people back home will tease him. So where you come from, that's considered naughty. Yeah, you know, I started off the 22 when I was young, and if it wasn't headshot, I was in trouble. So that's right. Little single shot 22 and a handful of shells. You just didn't shoot squirrels with a shotgun. But Kevin says if everybody has a 22, the squirrels won't hold still. Yeah, that's that rule I have. You don't shoot a sh with a, a squirrel sitting with a shotgun. It's kosher to shoot it when it's running there because the dogs will go in there and should should trim. Uh, it's late in the season now, yeah. so the females, paranoid, yeah, the females, they are probably bred, and they've got small ones in there about the size of a marble. So their maternal instinct is to escape, and they'll run, 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 where a big old boar, a rutting boar, he will just hang pretty much on the tree. He don't care. He's got his business done, but the maternal instinct of a sow squirrel is to escape, to raise those young. You think that the big squirrel, a big boar squirrel, is thinking to himself, I've already bred, Shoot me. Not to that extent, but he's content. He has no, you know, he'll try to get away, but if he's got a belly full of mass or whatever, he's pretty content. It's about like you going to a buffet and trying to get your money's worth and you get your stomach full. And he's not as apt to run. Now, if you go right at daylight, yeah. where they come down and they just they haven't started feeding yeah. and they're more elusive. A little jittery. Yeah, yeah, they're more elusive. But after they get fed up, they're more uh, likely to just to stick, but the females won't. Whether they got a belly full of food or not, they will run. Am I doing something with this? Yeah. You're the new guy on the hunt, so you're going right. to start us off. We give everything a warning before we go. If they get killed, it's their fault. That's my motto. <laughs> so, you got any musical ability? Zero. Okay. Give it a good rip. Just... I'm going to give you a pro tip that I usually don't give people is go <laughs> in there like that right there. <laughs> That didn't work. All right, horn down, horn down. No, you're sticking your tongue out. You're not kissing your wife, sticking your tongue out. Oh, I got you. Okay. Oh, that was a good. Yeah, right yeah. There. That's all I got. That's good. Good enough. Good enough. All right, Kevin Murphy, turn him loose. All right. Kevin's running two dogs today. Super Shorty is the baby of the bunch at barely a year old. 
Then there's the grizzled and scarred 13-year-old veteran Butchie Bad Toe, named on account of a toe he mangled by getting hung up in a gate as a pup. First up is squirrels, both eastern gray squirrels and fox squirrels, and then we'll switch dogs and strategies in order to target eastern cottontail rabbits. See how the sunlight's hidden? Over here is probably, you know, we've only been feeding around here, hitting that, hitting that sun. For those of you unfamiliar with the process of running squirrels with dogs, it's pretty straightforward. The dogs can hear, see, or smell where the squirrels are or have been on or near the ground. And then they trail them to whatever tree the squirrel most recently visited, where they bay up or bark their cute little heads off. Come on, Shorty, cut them up. We, in turn, come and look for the squirrel up in the tree and shoot it, assuming we find it. You know, we're trying to hunt into the sun. That way, the frost is burn off, and the squirrels, they see the sun just like we do. They love that warmth. They don't have to burn up calories. They can sit out there. They are a sun-loving animal. You'll see big fox squirrels just maybe laid flat on a limb, just sunning. So that's why I'm kind of scanning the tree line as the dogs move. That may be a squirrel that's never hit the ground. It's just laying up there flat, and then they maybe get nervous, and then they'll jump up. That's what the human eye catches, is usually some type of movement. He's up there. I can't see him. You want me to climb that tree, Kevin, and scurry him out? I'll climb it. Of course, it's never quite that simple. All right, what direction, guy? Let's keep moving. Late winter is a hard time to hunt. Squirrels, are, their movement patterns, are it's hard to pattern. Only the smart squirrels are left now. <laughs> the easy ones have been eaten, and they may have come out early this morning and just not be out right now. At this point in the winter, the squirrels who make mistakes have been killed off by hawks and owls and foxes, and those that don't make mistakes know to run toward hollow trees to escape. Occasionally, like one time in a dozen, you can rustle them out of the hollow tree by shaking the vines and branches around the tree or giving the tree a good stiff whack. My theory is you, you beat on it and it like breaks bark loose, stuff like that, it makes them nervous and they run out. So, oh, there you go. Oh, Zucker, I got half mine to shimmy that tree. Me and you both. A good kid. I want to just give it a shot. Some squirrels, for various reasons, make me feel like we really ought to be able to get this squirrel out of that tree. He's in there. Just to see. Come here. He could be just a little bit bigger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't quite enough to get a hold of. I there you go. Can't even go. Wait. But still. The squirrel usually ends up winning that contest of wills. <laughs> All right, go get the tractor. Let's get out of here, Kevin Murphy. Sometimes the hardest squirrel to get is that first squirrel. In a hole, Butchie. In a hole. Let's go. It might take hours or a whole day of wandering in the woods, but persistence should pay off. There has been one in here. See really anywhere he could be. Talk to him, Shorty. Talk, talk to him. There it is. There is. You see him? Yeah. Yeah. I see his tail. Talk to him. Watch for him, Shorty. Watch for him. Watch for him. Watch for him. Get on that tree. Watch for him. He's up there. Watch for him. Watch for him. Watch for him. He's on the back limb. Right? Okay, I see him. I yep. see him. What a hair. You got him, Kevin? Ooh, that was close. That hit. Watch for him. Watch for him. He's there coming. He All right. Nice shooting, brother. We're off the egg. Hey, we're off the egg. Good boy, Shorty. Good boy. Look at that thing the size of a house cat. Man, this is my best squirrel to eat right here. Like a young fox squirrel, more meat on it. So that, that is going to be some good table fare. It's funny because the whole time we were here, I wanted to walk this row. Yeah. You know? I love this row.
With the ice finally broken, I got it. or the skunk out of the box, or the first stone laid, or getting off the egg, or however your particular circle of acquaintances expresses getting the first of something, things start to pick up. There he is. Oh, I got it. Watch for it. Watch for it. Watch for it. Good boy. Good boy. Nice shot, brother. Look at the nuts on him. I know it. That... <laughs> Come on, Shorty. There's a squirrel right there. Squirrel, Steve. Did he stop? Yeah. Did you shoot see him? him? Yeah. <laughs> Is anybody going to shoot him? <laughs> Good shot. <laughs> So the fox squirrels are out and about. I keep my scope on two pie or, you know, walking through the woods. That way, to see something running or something, then I got a very better field of vision. And then when I, I jack it up to seven to magnification, to, if I see a piece or whatever of a squirrel. Another pro tip. Good shot. Good, good shot. Watch for him. Watch for him, Butchie. Well, that's a black phase eastern gray. The first one I ever saw was on the side of the road. I thought it was a burnt stump. Oh. Oh, he'll fall. That's your pine squirrel, Zucker. And there it is. We eat, we eat a lot of these. We ate 24 of those in one sitting, me and my three kids. A fairy diddle. What do you call them? A fairy diddle from my buddies in West Virginia call them. A fairy diddle. Yeah, never a fairy heard diddle. That. Never heard that. Yeah. Now you got your complete squirrel yeah. collection. We need a gray for the trifecta. So what do you see? A ton of raccoon shit. Oh, no, a ton of squirrel sign. OK, what kind of squirrel sign? Oh, is that all walnut stained? Exactly. Yeah, he dyed that thing black of walnuts. Unbelievable. Yeah, I have never, ever seen anything like that. That's pretty interesting. And what do we use walnut median for? Dying traps. Dying traps, what else? In the old days. Dying your clothes? Probably polished brass. Oh, really? In the tumblers. <laughs> There's a big squirrel. You guys see him? I don't see him. He's up above you in that tree somewhere. I see his tail. Oh, I got him, I got him. Nice shot. Good shot. Watch for him. There Watch for him. Watch for him. Good, good. Good day of the eating butchie. Nice shot. Oh, good big good squirrels squirrel. today. There you go. Good shoot, Kevin. Watch for him. Watch for him. Our first gray. Watch for him, Shorty. Watch for him. Here he is. There you go. See? No maternal instinct. See? <laughs> Testosterone. Yeah, I, yeah. I can weather the storm. No, I've done you're my right. duty. You're right. He's a male. He didn't need to go into a den. Man, that was amazing. Oh, that was good. Who's on deck, Kevin? Well, got four dogs today. They've been running together really good. We got Kilo 2.2. She's a young puppy. Oh, that's just a mother. Come. That. 54 days should be here. So what? I'll say that. Puppies. From that dog? Yeah. Really? Yeah, puppies. Huh. That but dog's got little puppies in it right now. Little puppies. That's awesome. Back. And here comes the daddy. This is Junior Riffick. Junior Riffick? Junior Riffick. He's a field trial dog turned killer. And then we got Simo Sally. Simo Sally? Yeah, Southeast Missouri yeah. Sally. I got her in Missouri. All my buddies want to buy this dog. Oh, really? Yeah, they all want to buy Simo Sally. Oh, look at that. She's a solid, solid dog. Let's see, little buff. And then Lemon Girl's a little bit shy, so I got some cheese and some salami to catch her at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so don't try to pet, don't make eye contact with her. She will hunt with me, but she don't hunt for me. So Steve and I get into the thick stuff and push through. Yep. You're going to watch the lane and guard it. If we see a slider or something, let's just shoot it. I mean, I'm a rabbit killer. When they circle it and we kill one, we, we yell, dead. Dead, dead, dead. Maybe leave it there. Get all their clothes where they won't stretch it. And we'll go from there. OK. It's rabbit time, and the beagles are on the prowl. 
No more precision shots into trees with 22 rim fires. Rabbits require shotguns, quick reflexes, and a bit of guesswork. The dogs head into the thick brush where they'll scent trail a rabbit until they kick it up or flush it. Seeing some sign. Then they'll trail that rabbit, barking and bellowing nonstop as it runs off. And since rabbits have a fairly small home range, they're only going to go so far in one direction until they circle around. And as long as the dogs stay on them, it's likely that the rabbit will eventually circle around in such a way that it presents an opportunity to one of us shotgunners. Did I miss it? What happened? I missed it. Luckily, second chances are not uncommon. Pick one up. Yeah. They've got one. Good. We're off the egg right off the start. That's a good. There, there oh, we are. Right there, right there, right there. I missed it twice. Do you ever shoot any of them turkeys on the move, or are they just all broke? No, I've got to have them standing still. We're 50 50. I missed them twice. Take no prisoners. <laughs> Dan, good job. Good job. All right, I'm off the egg. Get him? All right. Come here, boys, Dan. A little too close for the shotgun. Eh? Get him, Steve? No. Dead. Get him, Zucker? Yeah, finally. Hey! Big old rabbit. Man, this wind is brutal. <laughs> it is brutal. Dude, what now? Let's get some more. <laughs> right there he is. Good job, Sally. Good job. Nice shot, Kevin. So, Guy. Yes, sir. How'd you get all these briars in here? You manage this place. I burn it. This is what kind of habitat where I go hunting for birds, swamp rabbits, and cottontails. They got to have weed seed and briars. Got to have it. Protection. The yep. briars protection, the weed seed, it's food. What about the sumac? Some of the last quail I ever killed were full of sumac Some berries. Full of sumac berries, yep. It was a pretty good grow of it. I just left one tree for that. It'll grow up around it. You'll see all the sprouts coming up of them. Man, you got a great place. The management wise, we see eye to eye. There's not any huge fields of native grass that's a desert. It's broken up into food plots and briars and weed seeds. And some rough stuff that you can't walk through. Yeah. That's what, what you what gotta have for small game and deer. This is the one that we went and got the swamp rabbits on back in 2015. So All those years ago. She's going on 10. So she was in her prime back when we first hunted swamp rabbits yes. together. Yeah, Lightning Lucy. Hunt him up! Hunt him up! Good shot. I'm starting to get a rabbit or two back here. But I tell you what, it's keeping me warm. I can feel them behind me, so I'm not cold at all. Nice warm pad behind me. All right, what do you think about my rabbit ham pack? They're doing good, man. Huh? No, I can't believe how well they're doing. I think this ground really holds scent. Yeah. You know, it's wet and moist. I'll take you guys to the good spot this afternoon. <laughs> there you go. You need to bond, Steve. Bond with Kilo. They got something going on in here. Look at that thing pushing through there. Oh, grab it. Good follow-up. We shot more rabbits today than we have in the six years I worked here. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that's what makes all this habitat work worth it. Uh, oh, leaving it the ground dirty, man. Yeah. Briars.
Yeah. Brush. It was all worth it yeah. just for today. Return on investment. Amen. I like that. That's great. No, man, we didn't even, like, of the stuff I was thinking we'd hit, we haven't hit a fraction of it. We've hit maybe a quarter of what I wanted to hunt. We still haven't got into the swamps where I really wanted to hunt. <laughs> That's great. Man, it's been a pleasure, Kevin. Appreciate it really you. has. It's been Invite a pleasure. Invite us in. No, uh, it was really good. Well, thanks for having me, Steve. I appreciate oh, yeah, it. Yeah, man. Well, thank you. Someone might ask the juvenile question, what's the difference between hunting with Kevin's dogs in Michigan or Kentucky or New Mexico? It's still just squirrels and rabbits. To which I'd say, what's the difference between sitting on a beach in Cape Cod or Tahiti or Chicago? It's still just sand. Back at the house, we undertake the task of processing our bounty. Guys on rabbit duty. Let me practice, because I've never used it before. Well, Kevin and I test out his cousin's homemade prototype squirrel skinning rig up. I didn't get any instructions. My cousin, Kerry Don Orange, made this for me. What's his name? Kerry Don Orange. You're going to tail skin it? I'm going to try to, you know. And he, he's just doing this instead of stepping on it? Yes. I may have to cut. Oh, yeah. Perfect. That didn't work too bad for the first time. With some good feedback log for his cousin, we're off to the kitchen where Kevin is going to show us some of his favorite small game preparations. This is kind of a quick meal that I take to the sportsman club. We're going to make what I call hot wing squirrel mm -hmm. and hot wing rabbit with six different types of sauces. We've made some custom aluminum pans to compartments to keep them from combining so we know what's in this one. If you have a Super Bowl party or a small game party or whatever, then you can label them and then people can try what they want without it blending over. We start by trimming all the legs off both the squirrels and the rabbits, as well as the finger food sized backs or saddles of the squirrels. The squirrel back, this has got the biggest piece of meat, most tender. That's my favorite part by far. Put some butter tabs in there. Kevin adds a generous amount of butter and then drizzles them with various favorite sauces of his. Oh, so you're not like drowning them in that stuff? No, no. See, I thought you were going to bathe them. In. No. At the end, I'll, I'll, I'll roll them around. Yes. Ooh, Kevin Murphy. That looks good. Oh, it's going to be good. Kevin does not deep fry them first, a move I am highly skeptical of. He bakes them at a high temperature first, then he turns it down for a slow steaming. All right. Bam. In addition to the wings, Kevin's boning out the cottontail back straps, something I used to do when I was living for a short while in Wyoming, and we were on a huge cottontail tempura kick. Maybe it's because I've been looking at Western cottontails so long now, but man, I don't even remember Michigan cottontails being this big. We might just have some, like, freaks living on this place. Now, if you've got kids, pay attention to what you're about to see. Kevin dips those bunny back straps in batter, in this case, eggs, buttermilk, and water, coats them in flour, and then pan fries them in pork lard. Kevin Murphy. Oh, man. Yep. Look at that. Looking good. So if you got some spoiled, snotty kid who won't eat anything but chicken tenders, you can just slip him some of these and... Say it's chicken tenders. Say it's chicken tenders. <laughs> can I try one? Yeah. I'll, see. I'll tell you if I can tell the difference or not. So here I am. I'm in a restaurant. My kids ordered chicken tenders. They didn't finish them. You're cleaning up. I'm going to clean. I'm cleaning their plates up. I would know that's better than a chicken tender. But then it hasn't been sitting on my kid's plate for two hours. That's it's really so good, Kevin. I'm never going to not do that with a cottontail. Look at that, Kevin. Those are pretty, man. I can see you traipsing down to a church potluck with that thing. Look at that fork slide in there. With the wings done, we dig in. And as I mostly expected, they are delicious. That's really, really good. Yeah, that's a good preparation, man. To go with everything, Kevin made some cornbread, which we dip into what he calls tiger butter, butter mixed with sorghum molasses. This is so good. Oh, good Kevin. Thank you. Love it. That was a really good way to cook those squirrels, Kevin. 
And finally, Kevin brought one last special treat. Do you remember when we were hanging out like a million years ago? We were catfishing, and I had my bow and arrow. And what come floating down the river that I shot? A paddlefish. Were you thinking about that when you brought that paddlefish exactly. caviar? Yeah. Exactly. Swimming in Lake Barkley Sunday morning. Okay. Fishery? No. No. And, it, and I guess it, this is some of the best caviar around because it came out of the lake. Look at that. I haven't had that before. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm basically to do something I ain't never did here. Never not once. I'm getting ready to not be able to say that. Oh, wow. It's good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Love it. I like the way it tastes with that cucumber. Earlier, I had wondered aloud about what keeps grown men running around the woods all day with packs of dogs, and I observed that stuff about the answer lying within the question. Thinking on it now, though, I realized that I missed something. Part of what keeps us out there is what happens in here, in the kitchen, when we get to sample together the results of our labors. If you think of hunting as an inhale, this is the exhale. It takes both actions to make a complete breath. Thank you.